Here we go. Spoiler alert, audience. My toe! I know. I'm getting old, girl. I'm getting old. <laughs> Hi, everybody! There they are! That is Tuesday! Some special guests in the audience today. Welcome to the show, everybody! Happy Tuesday! Hello, Mendota Heights! Hello, South St. Paul! Hello, Izetta, and hello to my beautiful mother. Good morning, welcome to the show. I'm grateful to be sitting. Hi, everybody, have a seat. Let's get started. Hi. Get a cup of coffee, and let's have some fun. That's right. Or grab a Bud Light, whatever you want, in honor of my mother-in-law, there we go. Thanks, everybody. Welcome to the show, everybody. My name is Jason. Right over there is my sidekick sister. Give it up. For Miss Kendall, everybody. Hi. Hi, Kendall. Morning. Morning. How you doing? I feel great. Do you feel good? Yeah, I mean, yeah. better than you and your busted toe. I know. I mm -hmm. hobbled out here because, uh, and it's perfect timing. Uh, first, let me let me give out some shout outs here. We have some special guests in the oh. audience, Director Leo. First, uh, Hannah is uh, the newest member of our uh, Fox 9 News team. Uh, she's here with Mama. There's Hannah hey. and her Mama. Hi, Hannah. <laughs> Hannah's, Hannah is uh, the newest member of our team, and she's fantastic. You can't help but smile when you watch her anchor the news. I mean, she could tell you about locusts, and you would still smile. You know, yeah, that's how sweet locusts. she is. And then, locusts? I don't know. I just pulled it out. <laughs> and then, uh, speaking of making you smile, uh, this woman, other than my own mother, uh, I would rather spend time with this woman than most humans on Earth. My mother-in-law is here, right there. There's Mama Haas, and for the first, I think, Bobby, is this your first time here, Bobby? Is this, that's my sister-in-law, everybody. Bobby's here. Bobby, uh, Bobby's here. It, it, Bobby doesn't, it, bless her heart, she doesn't get to travel a lot or anything because she has kids, they're, like, they're, they're all under uh, like three or four, and so you know how busy moms get, so Bobby's out of the house. <laughs> She's, and I love it, I love it. Oh, I don't feel good. Uh, so yeah, so yesterday, <laughs> okay. so I, this all started with executive producer Jeff. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I, I physically feel all right, but producer Jeff and I are the exact same age. We're 45 years old. Um, I'm six months older. Thank you, Jeff. I'm six months older. I knew older. he was going to say something. I have to legally say that, but we're in the back. We're in the back before we come out, and I think, audience, you'll be able to relate to this. Jeff looked at me, and he goes, we are at that age. And I went, what do you mean? He goes, we are at that age, whenever we get an ache or a pain or something, we immediately go to the worst case scenario. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I got it. I have uh, monkey pox. You know what I mean? We, uh -huh. yeah. we go to the worst place, then we go on the WebMD, oh, no. then, and you never do that, you know, oh. Because I have, a, I have a pain in my lower left back, like right here under my mm -hmm. rib cage. So immediately I think, I'm dying. You know, and I go to the worst place. It could be anything. So what do I do? I go to the Google. Never do that. Never Google a symptom because you won't sleep for days. Because it's like, I could have this. I could have this virus. I could have that monkey herpy thing from a couple weeks ago. I could, and I, it was all over Florida. It was, of course it happens in Florida, but anyway. Oh. I could have anything, so now I'm scared to death. So I had that already, and I, you know, I don't know what it is. So then yesterday, I'm, I'm, this is another thing you all can relate to. Colin, speaking of my mother-in-law and sister-in-law, Colin was gone this weekend. So I was Han Solo around the house. So what did I do? <laughs> I purged my closet. And I, I, I went in there. And Lord knows I spent a lot of time in the closet. And, uh, and I know, so, so I, purged, I purged my closet. That was really good. <laughs> thank you, sweetie, thank you. I appreciate when I can make the crew laugh. But anyway, so I'm in the closet for hours and, and audience, I filled six huge garbage bags full of clothes to donate. Six, six, yeah feels so good. It's great. 
So I'm doing that. I'm running around the house like a chicken with its head cut off, and I'm running and did it because I want to get it done before Colin comes home. I don't know why, but I just want to get it done. I rammed going 60 miles an hour my little toe into a chair. <laughs> My little toe is now the size of a Stel Getty. It's oh. like, it's, it looks like Sophia from the Golden Girls. Oh. It's like this big. I can't, so, and these shoes, you know, men's dress shoes like women's, they, they contour in the front. Mm. So I'm walking like a drunk penguin, and, and, but oh, it just. It hurts. It, but oh well. So I'm, I'm basically, I'm falling apart is the theme. I, oh. I have, I have the pain, I have, yeah. So I gotta find a doctor. Mm. I don't have a regular doctor. I gotta find one. So if you're watching and you're a doctor and you're nice and you can put up with an annoying person, call me. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot news. Here we go. <laughs> really made you laugh there with that one. Yeah. I just keep thinking about uh, yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, first up, uh, the sports and entertainment world uh, said goodbye to Kobe Bryant yesterday. Uh, you saw it probably on the news yesterday. Thousands packed the Staples Center in L.A. to honor Kobe and his daughter, Gianna. Uh, we put together some highlights here. Here's the first batch. Ladies right there, beautiful, stunning. Beyonce, Alicia Keys, and Christina Aguilera, who I could cry just listening to Christina Aguilera. Oh, all three of them, they're yeah. so pure, oh my goodness. That's a great mm. way, yeah, Christina's voice is just, boom. Kobe's wife, uh, this was a moment, I, I was listening to Morning Joe on the way in today, and uh, Willie guys too, I love. Willie has a great way, Willie said, uh, listening to Vanessa, if you don't get a lump in your throat, something something's wrong with you. Kobe's wife and basketball royalty shared their memories of the two. Another little collection here. Look at this. He was the most amazing husband. Kobe loved me more than I could ever express or put into words. He was the early bird and I was the night owl. I was fire and he was ice and vice versa at times. We balanced each other out. He would do anything for me. I have no idea how I deserved a man that loved and wanted me more than Kobe. We talked about business. We talked about family. We talked about everything. And he was just trying to be a better person. Now he's got me. I'll have to look at another crime meme for the next. As we know, the Black Mama's legacy will be more than just being one of the greatest basketball players of all time. And believe me, Kobe, Kobe was truly a gifted and intelligent student of the game. I remember him saying, these guys are playing checkers, and I'm out here playing chess. And I would say, I guess so, Kobe. I don't know how to play chess. One of a few great moments from Shaq, Michael Jordan, and uh, of course, moving words from Vanessa Bryant. And uh, Michael, if you couldn't quite understand it, Jordan's laughing at, at the, the crying meme that went around, and now he's like, now I get another one. You need moments of levity like that, uh, especially when you're so moved by words that Vanessa said. She also revealed in that, uh, Jeff was telling me that she bought... Remember the dress that Rachel McAdams wore in the notebook? I'm a burr, that blue dress. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, uh, Kobe bought that dress, the real dress, for Vanessa because he said it represented her, that, 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 yeah, yeah, that spirit. So it was really, I mean, you couldn't, and my friend, hey, hey, Haley, Haley Hurst, who works at her sister station uh, in L.A., they, that whole crew was obviously down there the whole day, and she said the feeling 
you know, she's covered a lot of stuff. Haley's been in news for a long time. She said it was one of those days where you could feel it. The, the, the emotion was palpable as people came in and out of the, the Staples Center. Well, Lex, next in the dish, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's switch gears a little bit. We're getting uh, another look at a sequel to a surprise hit movie that I know I loved. I don't know if you saw it, A Quiet Place. Uh, the final trailer for A Quiet Place Part 2 dropped yesterday and... Shh, it's very intense. That's a good trailer. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Love a, hashtag love a good trailer. That's a good trailer. Mm -hmm. The movie stars Emily Blunt again, and it's written and directed by her husband, again, John Krasinski. Now, in the original, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, spoiler alert, uh, the family must stay quiet or they're going to be attacked by monsters that have landed on Earth or something. I don't know. Uh, now, A Quiet Place a Part 2 debuts next month. Did you see the original? No, but honestly, it is one of the very few scary movies I would like to see. It's, it's, you know why you, you should see it? It's intense. It's right. not it's not gory per se. It's just a good thriller because you you feel it because yeah that's the basic premise. If they speak like if they're outside, if they speak the 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 creature or whatever it is uh, has like supersonic hearing and mm -hmm. they just come out and they eat you like a velociraptor. Right. And they, so you you can't say any you there's like a scene in the original where they're going down steps and something happens to somebody's foot and you want to scream but you can't scream. Because you're gonna, will be eaten. Right. So it's you know it's right. It's, it's well, I remember in the trailer for the original. It was in the trailer, so this isn't giving anything away. But it had the like the kid, the toy went off, and oh. that was terrifying. Yeah, we won't say how that scene ended. Anyway, that's uh, we're gonna take a break. We'll be back right after this. Stay with us, everybody. Whoop. The hot dish is just getting started. Coming up next, it's the night we've been waiting for. Well, let's be clear. Ted has been waiting for. Fantasy Suite on The Bachelor. Was it Windmill Part 2 or did it just spin out of control? Ted will give us his recap. Then Thrifty Traveler is back with his ultimate list of spring break deals. From Florida to Mexico, where should you go? Plus, he's going to tell you how y'all can help make some dreams come true for some lucky travelers. That's all coming up, so stay right there. A lot of the drama tonight was focused on Madison. Now, Madison uh, is one of the contestants. She revealed to Peter that she's a virgin. She's saving herself for marriage. Peter, uh, we learned in the windmill last year, is not saving himself for marriage. But <laughs> Madison warned us that if Peter did it with any of the uh, two remaining women, she would leave the show. And so Peter had to tell Madison, uh, I did it with both of the remaining women. I... I have been intimate, and I can't lie to you about that. <laughs> I can't lie, because it's all on camera. I can't... Yeah, exactly. Jimmy Kimmel recapping The Bachelor last night. And can we, can, we're all adults. It's, it's, what is this, Bob Eubanks saying whoopee? I love it, I've been intimate. Just say, y you had the nooks. You know what I mean? Just uh, just... Yeah, boinked. Yeah, I, I was intimate. What is this, the like colonial time? Anyway, you're courting. Uh, it was the week we've all been waiting for. Peter is down, well, <laughs> none of the crew is. But anyway, <laughs> Peter is down to the final three, and you know what that means. Time for the fantasy suites. But uh, will, will all the women take part? That means, once again, it's time for... America Loves Ted, joining us from Bachelor Nation headquarters, 
slash our control room is Jason Show producer Ted Johnson. Ted, I got it. Let me just start with a compliment. Your producing of the segment gets better and better each week because <laughs> look at the graphic uh, enhancement that you have behind you. That's fantastic, we have Ted. The three ladies. That's right. Okay, uh, Fantasy Suite Week, where did they go? So they went to Gold Coast, Australia. Ooh. Which, yeah, very lovely. Very lovely. Um, so we had to check in with Dale Kay, who, you know, is Australian. He's our garden guy. Um, and Dale took issue. Dale took issue with something that happened right at the start of the show. Leo, roll it. Uh. Hey. Good day, Sheila's. <laughs> How you guys doing? That is a stereotype. Sheila's. I'm not oh. supposed to say that about Australian women anymore. Oh, really? Dale K is demanding Peter apologize to him personally. <laughs> well, well, also, well, also, that's tacky. You know what it looked like? It looked like they were waiting in a waiting room to go to the dentist's office. You know? Yeah. Okay, who's next for the fantasy suite? You, Sheila, come on in. You know, it's just ugh. And you know what's even more awkward? For the first time in Bachelor history, all three women stayed in the same suite. So when one would come back in the morning, the next one would go. Awkward. Oh, <laughs> someone in the audience goes, looking for trouble. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Madison. Madison, now she's, she's the, the, the V, right? She's the one, she wants nothing to do with none of these shenanigans. Saving herself for marriage, which is, let's just be clear, oh, that's fine. It's fine, yeah, no absolutely. Um, but she hasn't revealed that she's a virgin up until this point. So at the end of last week's rose ceremony, the beginning of this rose ceremony, she pulls him aside and says, hey, look, um, if you have sex with any of the other women, it's over for us. Which he's like, uh, this is kind of an ultimatum. Uh, and she's like, well, not really, sort of. But anyways, that's, what she, that's how she frames it. Um, he then, uh, that obviously didn't change his mind. No. Nope. Because Victoria and Hannah Ann both went into the fantasy suites and... They didn't play Uno. They did their <laughs> Titanic impressions. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but then he, you know, has that, that meeting with Madison and then all, uh, all drama breaks loose. But, but before, but before they get to that point, I want to show you this. Because you and I probably would have the same reaction to this date. Madison and Peter go on their date, which is a skyscraper at the top of Gold Coast. No. Climbing up the side of this skyscraper. No, no, pass. no. No, I would rather have sex in a windmill. Yep. No. I, if, you know what? If a fantasy suite is on the line here, I think I, sorry, can't do it. No, I can't do it. No, I, I would rather never have sex again in my life than do that. Look at that. Okay, Ted. Ted, and I know you're feeling the same thing. Let me be very Crystal Carrington clear. I am not judging Madison for her beliefs. I actually think uh, it's refreshing to see on this show. Dot, dot, dot. You know where I'm going. Madison, this rings a little hollow to me hmm? because you are on The Bachelor. And you. this show has been on since God was in diapers. Yep. Everybody knows about this. You know what I mean? It rings a little... You know what I mean, Ted? You know what you signed up for. You knew going in that this guy, four times in the windmill. Four! Um, he ain't making shoes in the windmill. And it wasn't like she was totally upfront right away about this. So, I mean, she was, she sort of, it was sort of piecemeal. Um, yeah. And then, you know, kind of exerting control over everyone else's relationship, you know. So we have a little tease, right, Ted? You have one more piece of, uh, you get to boss Leo around one more time. What do we have? So quickly here. So Madison sort of walks away at the end of the episode. He begs for her to come back, not to leave. It kind of ends on a cliffhanger. So the finale, they tease the finale, and look at this. I don't even know how to do something. My heart is too broken right now. Don't let her go. Those love stories are made out of. We're home. We're home to us. 
I mean, can I tell you, Mama Haas has never cried to me like that. I just want to be, uh, what do we, Bring her home. I don't ever want to tell a woman to settle down a little bit, but why is Mama crying? I like her with her big hoop earrings. I mean, it's, it's the bachelor. Producers are just like, keep rolling. Keep oh, rolling. they're loving it. Yeah, and we love you. Ted, thank you very much. Thank you. Producer Ted. Bring, bring her home to us. Whatever. Be Next nice. in the dish, I know. I love Mama, but I, come on. Next in the dish, Jimmy Fallon took his show out of the studio for one night. Literally. Look at this. Welcome to The Tonight Show, everybody. Yes. Guys, I'm so excited about this. BTS is my guest tonight. This is very historic because it's the first time New Yorkers have ever been excited to see seven guys get on a packed subway. Uh, so thank you for that. Can you hear me in the back? <laughs> we are making TV history as the first in late night to do a show on the subway. It's exciting because if things go well, NBC is going to move the fifth hour of the Today Show down here. So that's good, yeah. Uh, this is incredible. We really are doing the monologue on the subway. We actually wanted to do this last week, but the train never showed up. <laughs> But seriously, tonight's gonna be so much fun. We're gonna spend one hour together, or as it's known on the subway, two stops. <laughs> it's great to be down here, though. It's cramped, it's loud, and there's no view. If this were a New York City apartment, it'd be 3,000 bucks a month, you know? That's right. Jimmy's guests were the K-pop group BTS. In addition to hanging out on the subway, they hit up a legendary deli uh, performed in Grand Central Station as well. Very cool. I think we're going to do this. We're going to perform on the light rail at the we Hiawatha are? station. Yeah, that's right. We're going to, yeah. And we're taking this entire audience. Surprise! <laughs> you get a Metro Transit pass, and you get a Metro Transit pass. And we're stopping at the deli. <laughs> Nothing but the best here. Yeah. <laughs> that's inventive. You know, you got you to gotta keep things fresh. You know, the, the late night ratings, you, you, you know, uh, Colbert and Kimmel and Fallon, you got to, uh, all, all uh, honesty, Fallon's ratings are down, uh, Colbert's number one, and sometimes Kimmel beats them. You got to you gotta spice things up. I don't know if doing the subway show is the thing to do, but you know. I mean, the, some of it didn't translate super well either. Like, well, no, I can always tell if the audience know? in our show laughs, and right. there was mild chuckling at the, the right. jokes. But you know, but you're doing jokes in a subway. Give the guy a little break. Yeah. You try, you know? You, you try, yes. Next in the dish, Pete Davidson is opening up about his future and how he feels about Saturday Night Live. He chatted, uh, uh huh, uh huh. Uh, who, who is this? Charlemagne the God. Thank you. For a rare, I was afraid, Jeff's shaking my head, shaking his head like, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to pronounce it. For a rare <laughs> hour long interview, Pete says he, he wanted to leave the show after last season because he feels like he is the butt of all the jokes. He loves Lauren Michaels, but says the environment is cutthroat and he feels like they think he's dumb. He's been on the show since 2014. I'm going to tread lightly here because uh, I really want to say, I want to be more blunt, but I don't think you should ever punch down on someone that uh, has revealed that he struggles with mental health issues. Mm -hmm. But I will, but having said that, to be very honest, it seems a little, a little Willie Winerish to me. Um, you are at Saturday Night Live and you are an adult. It is going to be cutthroat. This isn't, this isn't, Hooterville Community Theater, you know what I mean? I <laughs> know I'm serious and nothing yeah. against Hooterville, but you're playing, but you're playing with the, I'm being very, you're playing yeah. with the big boys here and you are with a room full of comedians. You can't get your feelings hurt. You gotta, you know, and this is coming from a real, you gotta toughen up a little bit. Everything he said just kind of sounded like, oh, we, they're picking on us. Right. Pete, you're a professional, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I it just, I don't know. And, and to bust, oh, I'm going to leave the show. Wow. You're going to bust. I mean, uh, Lauren Michaels gave you a great start, and you're mm -hmm. going to just hike your leg and tinkle on it? I, I, I don't think that's wise for your career. I don't. No, no. And that's his shtick, being kind of the, like, dumb, goofy one. So why, is, why are you complaining yes. about that now? Yeah. Still ahead, everybody. If you're looking for a getaway for spring break, the Thrifty Traveler will join us with some of his picks. And he'll talk about a charity drive he's holding this week that I know you're going to love. That and more when we continue. Back after this, everybody. Stay right there. Look 
who's here, everybody. Welcome back. I hobbled my way over to the set. He was worth it. Spring break is approaching, and you may uh, be looking for a getaway. Our next guest has some ideas on how to get there on the cheap. Give it up for Jared from Thrifty Traveler, everybody. Welcome Thanks back. Thanks for having me again, Jason. I always like uh, I always like for you to rub it in. Uh, where 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 did you just come back from? Where have you been lately? Uh, you know, I was in Hawaii. I was in Maui, and I know you love Honolulu love, as well. Yes. It's a little expensive though. So like the whole thrifty traveler lifestyle, there's yeah. a little bit of a eh. goes against the it whole thrifty. But, it, but it's incredible. But Let's it, be it's honest. Hawaii. It I is mean, Hawaii. Yeah. Yes. Let's start with okay. So Hawaii is on the expensive end. Uh, we're going to get to general deals a little bit later, but spring break deals, what are we looking at? Sure. So spring break generally can be any time kind of in March or even the beginning of April. So I have to say, you know, now at this point in time, it's almost too late to book. But you got to start thinking about, you know, if you are going to be traveling in April, um, you know, there's some really cheap flights to like Minneapolis to Puerto Vallarta. And again, we're going to get to those yeah. a little bit later. Um, but you really need to start being proactive and booking at least 45 days before you're going to depart. Otherwise, prices just skyrocket. Okay, so at that that is worst case scenario. In an ideal situation, maybe someone's planning for next spring break. Yeah. They're, they're budgeting. When in an ideal situation should they book for spring break travel? So you should definitely be looking, you know, around Thanksgiving. Okay. And definitely hop, you know, obviously follow Thrifty Traveler. You know, be on Google Flights. Be looking. Set up some Google Flights price alerts. Um, you got to be looking ahead. That last minute booking is just going to, you're going to end up paying two to three times more than you would if you booked, you know, back in, you know, in the fall or early winter. Okay. Let's talk about uh, a subject. Uh, I, I went off on it a couple days ago. It's on every newscast. Real ID. <laughs> real the ID. Mess, the yeah. mess that is real ID. What's your perspective? Oh. What, what, I mean, and for those watching, because what was it, Jared? 50% of 50% of our fellow citizens do not know what real ID is. Sure. And only 15, I heard this stat this morning, only, I know it's 12% of Minnesotans have a real ID compliant license. So no one is prepared for this. So what do I think is going to happen? Yeah. Con I mean, election. Come October 1st. Uh, come, come October, yeah. I mean, we're November's election. I mean, Congress and the White House are for sure going to push this back, in you my think opinion. So? I mean, you can't have, I mean, only, a, so if you don't have a real ID compliant, you know, Minnesota license or an enhanced driver's license or a passport, like you won't be able to fly. Um, so like anyway, you're going to go to the gate. Yes. I said the scenario, you're going to go to the gate. And I think of, I think of a grandmother who doesn't have access to a lot of information. She wants to go fly to see grand, right. grandson Timmy. They're not going to let her on. No, you're going to go to security and they're going to be like, you don't have a compliant license. And that's just, it's insane. Yeah. So there's just, it's going to get pushed back because, I mean, this has been out for 15 years. They've been trying to get compliant with this. And there's and two states. There's two, I think it's Nebraska. And there's one other that won't even let people apply until this summer. <laughs> I read that. And I was like, it's, well, it's, it's not going to happen. It's going to be just, but still do it now. Yes, I, if I you can. I pre-application. Yes. I have an appointment actually tomorrow. So I'm actually, uh, yes, which makes you, Colin very happy. Yes, so, yeah. If you are getting a new license, be sure to uh, give yourself ample time because I think it takes like several months to even get your ID and then you're going to wait a couple hours just at the DMV. So. Another hot topic. I want to just get your opinion on this. I also read and I wonder if you uh, you can neither confirm nor deny <laughs> that Delta, the the powers that be at Delta are thinking of getting rid of change fees. Have you heard this? I have heard a little bit about it, but we will see. Because you, I, I'm asking you because you made a, you looked in your crystal ball for real ID. You think it's going to be pushed back. Do you think they're actually going to do this? We will see. I will be the first. So th that is a huge source of revenue for Delta, but Delta is making so much money, let's be honest. But I will say that Delta is always on the forefront as far as yep. U.S. airlines are concerned. So, you know, when they roll out something new, usually it's Delta that does it, and then United and American copy it. Yeah, because um, if, you, if you don't get what we're saying is, you know, when you, 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 know, you book your ticket yeah. and you, something comes up and you want to prolong your trip, which I have done many times, right, Mama Haas? Uh, yeah, when you do it, then Delta charges you, or the airlines charge you, what is it, Jared? I mean, for international flights, it can be over $300. And then you have to pay whatever the, the fare difference is. So, I mean, it can be just insane. In your um, professional opinion, though, don't you think if they do this, because I find this fascinating, don't you think 
the amount of goodwill oh, and yeah. positive publicity would almost be worth it for them. Yeah. So Southwest already has, I mean, they've always, you know, never had change fees um, and people love Southwest and it's always a cult favorite. Um, but I definitely agree that Delta could do something like this and be a huge win. And they're, again, already making so much money. People just flock to Delta until, of course, American and United yeah. copy them. Let's get to deals. What do we have? Yeah. All right. So we got some really amazing domestic deals. Um, New Orleans, $156 nonstop round trip, April through January. So let's talk about a little bit, how do you find these deals? Of course, go to thriftytraveler.com or use Google Flights. Definitely the best way to yep. search for fares on your own. All right, New Orleans, 155 nonstop round trip, April through January. Seattle and Portland this spring and fall. Uh, and actually Portland, this is a great one, in July and August. Um, so normally not a, a, a cheap trip, but yeah. Portland's a hot one. Denver, $96 nonstop round trip on Delta. That's on the site today. One that might be great for spring break is to Miami, nonstop on American and Delta, April through May, 136 bucks. That's a good deal, believe me, I know. Yeah, yeah. More with Jared when we come back. Stay right there, answering your travel questions from Facebook. my friends. More with Jared from Thrifty Traveler, thriftytraveler.com. Uh, you guys have a special, uh, I saw you on Instagram yesterday. I, I always crack up because knowing Jared is funny because I'm like, oh, where is he now when I get it? But you were in your office. In my office. Uh, tell folks what you're doing. This is great. Yeah, so we've partnered with Make-A-Wish Minnesota to raise frequent flyer miles to help send kids with critical illnesses on trips with their families. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, so it's obviously, you know, idea. we love points and miles at Thrifty Traveler. Yeah. I think there's nothing better than to use those miles to help make a kid, you know, that's suffering or, you know, just not doing very well, have something to look forward to. Just one of these amazing trips that Make-A-Wish Minnesota puts on all the time. And you have a goal. So we're trying to raise 2 million miles. We're already, uh, I think, close to a half a million. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, this is going to be through Sunday. Uh, but Make-A-Wish Minnesota needs over 75 million miles just in Minnesota every year. Oh, um, my goodness. So it's crazy. Yeah, they do some amazing things. You don't hear about it a lot. Um, but some of these stories are simply incredible. And you, we're going to get to one in just a second. But if someone's watching... Is it easy? To, to, I mean, is it easy to donate? Because, you know, sometimes oh, yeah. anything dealing with airlines is a little cumbersome. Is it pretty easy for folks watching if they want to donate? So this is one of the few things, like you said, yeah. that's actually easy. So you just go to thriftytraveler.com slash make-a-wish, and it's really easy to donate. You know, if you only have 1,000 miles or maybe you got a 500,000 miles, you know, they'll take any amount. Um, so, you know, if you got some spare miles and they might be expiring, you know, just hop on to thriftytraveler.com slash make a wish to donate. You mentioned uh, a lot of good stories come from this. There's like you on your social media. Tell the story. Let's show the pictures, Leo, if we can. Who are we looking at here, Jared? Uh, so this is Anthony. Uh, so he, yeah, so back in 2001, his wish was to be a Northwest pilot for a day. And Northwest and Make-A-Wish granted this. He went to, flew to Milwaukee and back. I mean, like the cutest kid ever. Ever, ever. But the coolest part of this story is he's now an airline pilot. Uh, Look at that! Yeah. So we got to hang out with him yesterday, and he's like the coolest guy ever, loves Make-A-Wish. Like this like changed his life. Um, and, you know, there's so many different kids that are going through so, you know, many yeah. different types of illnesses and just to have them, you know, be able to get them out of the hospital or, you know, out of treatments and go on a trip. I mean, just, it's What awesome. a great story. Right? I it's mean, so that, cool. That's like something you would see in a, in a Hallmark movie. In a movie. Hallmark I mean, movie. That, they that should is good. definitely turn it into a Hallmark movie because it, it's, it's so fun. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, if folks donate 50000 or more, they can win something? Yeah, they can be put in a drawing for a $500 Delta gift card. So if you have 50000 or more, you know, American, Delta, United Miles, definitely hop on to thriftytraveler.com slash travel show and you'll be put in the drawing for that $500 gift card. We always like to wrap up by asking you, what, what's your next adventure? Where are you going next? Nothing too crazy. Punta Cana. Well, I mean, okay. <laughs> well, Nothing co too crazy is Coon Rapids. <laughs> yeah, I... I, I... Jared! Sorry. I'm going to Andover. Yeah, I mean... Uh... 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are so jaded. I no, know. No, when are you, when are you going? Go, going at the end of April, but we're just going to an all-inclusive resort, one that you can book with Miles, yeah. the Hyatt one. Um, really looking forward to it. It's brand you like new. all inclusive, don't you? I like free all inclusives. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's the thrifty traveler. Give it up for Jared, everybody. <laughs> for more information, you can find Jared at thriftytraveler.com. And don't forget to follow him on social media too to search for Thrifty Traveler. When we come back, we're heading into the audience where they can literally ask me anything. We'll be right back, everybody. Stay with us. Back in a moment. Free all inclusive. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. Uh, it is time to turn over. I always love when we do this because I'm always so grateful for these people behind me that come to our show every day. So we're going to turn the show over to them for another round of Ask Me Anything, where they, I have to answer questions from our studio audience. And first up, where's Joanna from Edina? Woo! Come over here. Let me hobble up here. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. What's your question for me? Well, I think you have such a rich, deep, beautiful voice. Thank and I you. wanted to know if you are a singer. <laughs> uh, no, no. You know, it's funny. I, I, I am not, and I, I say this to folks. Uh, if I, look, I'm very lucky. I have a lot of great things in my life. If I could, if there was like a little fairy godfather or a little magi like a lamp, I would ask to be. Able, I wish I could sing. I really do. It's a talent. I, I do not have, and I wish I could. But no, not at all. You do not. I, the only thing I can sing is like the Dallas theme song in my shower. That's about it. Yeah. And you do not want to hear that. No. Yes. Th thank you. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you very much. Joanne, just, it's a big ego boost today from Joanne. Where's Melinda? Melinda, come over here. You don't, don't right, right there. I don't want you to fall. What's your question? My question was, what is your favorite moment that you've ever had on the Jason show? Oh, that's a really good question. You know what? Um, there's a lot, Jared's a good example. Jared is a legit friend of mine that originated from the show, but I think my favorite moment is with uh, Paige Davis from Trading Spaces on oh, yeah. TLC. We had never met before, and Paige was physically here in studio. Love her. And it's the first time, and I've been in TV, this is my 23rd year in television. Wow. Um, I have never had this happen where she walked out onto the set and we looked at each other like I'm looking at you, and it was an instant friendship. We actually ended up hanging out that night. She came to my house in the most meta moment ever. She's sitting on my couch with Colin and our best friend Jen. What were we doing? Watching Trading Spaces with Paige oh, Davis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So That's that, getting her as a friend. Thank yes. You. Thank you. Where, where's Hannah? Oh, right here, everybody. This is Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Hi, I love you. I love you. What's your question? Um, I love watching your show. Thank question you. Question for you. Yeah. You're full of many talents. One of those talents is sitting on that tiny little chair when you do the hot dish. Have you ever slipped off? <laughs> you can sit down now, Hannah. No. Yes, I have. Hannah, I have, and they caught it. I was doing, um, what had happened was, we can't really take a shot of it. It is permanently um, adjusted up because I'm so tall. One time, it, it, it periscoped down no! live on the show, and I almost fell backwards. And it is a clip the producers love to pull out I'm from sure time to time. I'm yes. Sure they do. Welcome to the team. We love having you. Hannah, everybody. Okay, next is a... a Lori Haas from, oh, it's my mother-in-law, everybody. Go ahead and stand up, sweetheart. What's your question? I'm just wondering why you didn't call me this weekend when you were all by yourself so we could have wings. Who let her ask a question? You're right, you're right. I've been waiting we, for wings I all know, weekend. I, know, I thought we, Jason's gonna call me. We texted, we texted all weekend and Colin's like, she didn't text me. And I was like, you're right, I, did, I didn't wanna bother you because whenever we're together, I make her go to serums and we play pool tabs and, and we always get a big eye roll from Papa Haas, but I should have just ignored that eye roll. Yeah. I apologize. That's this weekend, this weekend. Okay, where's, where's Wendy? Where's Wendy? Hi, Wendy. Hi. What's your question? I know you love Knott's Landing. I do. What's your favorite male and female character on the show, besides Paige, because I know you love her? 
Okay, these are the best questions ever. I love, yes, for people who don't know, I love Knott's Landing, which was a spinoff of Dallas. We used I will, to have Knott's Landing parties. I did too, and, and I kicked I everybody the, out because everyone started talking during the episode. No. But yeah, you can't talk. Mm -mm. You know who I love? I love Michelle Lee. I loved Karen. Me too. I think she's just fantastic. And Mac, I love that relationship I because it was, unlike Dallas, which, look, I love Dallas, but it was so fantasy. I love Knott's Landing because it was grounded. It was about middle class yep. folks in a cul-de-sac and that couple represented that love I think that the show. best. Yeah, it ha they have to bring it back. I they think. do. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Where's Hi We have one more. We have time for one more. Yeah. Where's Heidi? Heidi? Oh, I'm coming to you. You stay right there. Okay. Well, you stand up though. Let's, I want to get a good shot of you. What's your question? My question is, do you still drop into the Golden Valley American Legion? I do to play bingo. Yes. Yes, I do. The Cheshire yes. Bird. Yes. 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 Yeah, under the B5. Yes, I do. <laughs> Give it up for Heidi, everybody. Yeah. What's funny is, what's funny is I play pull tabs with my mother-in-law, but growing up, I, uh, growing up, I played bingo with my mother. Uh, I was literally raised on a step like this. She would put me in the bassinet on the floor while she played bingo. Uh, seriously, I had secondhand smoke for most of my life. <laughs> I turned out fine though. We'll be right back everybody to wrap things up. Back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Kendall's back. I was talking about my mom and the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, with, with Mama Haas, I play pool tabs. And then it, it's not a joke. It, it's not just something I make up. I literally was raised in a VFW. My mom played bingo twice a week. Mm -hmm. And she was young. I mean, she played, right. with my, she played with both of my grandmothers. And we would go to the VFW in the 80s. And back then, you know, you could smoke, smoke anywhere. anywhere. And I, I think about that, and there's a great, I've mentioned this on the show, I think, once before. My mom used to play, are you ready for this? Yes. My mother used to play 44 bingo cards at one time. Oh. 44. Did she have you help? Um, no. So she would play so many that she was in our local newspaper, the News <laughs> Dispatch. So there's this great, great classic 1980s photo, because this reporter came down. I'm in a bassinet. There's a yeah. great photo of my mom with a cigarette in one hand and a bingo dauber in the other. And there I am in front of the cards like a good luck charm. You know, and back then no one noticed like, can you not have the kid in the VFW? You know what I mean? But and it's the best, it's the quintessential so 80s picture of cigarette, bingo dauber, baby, baby. Right there, you know. <laughs> but I, you know. And I was an only child. You know, people always, you know, I, I, I always say like my alone time, I tell Colin, I, you had to as an only child. I had to entertain myself. So mm -hmm. while she was playing bingo, I would play with He-Man on the steps of the VFW. <laughs> and so I can entertain myself for hours on end. Time. And I learned it at the VFW <laughs> in Michigan City, Indiana. That's right. We're going to take a break. We'll be back to wrap things up in just a little bit, everybody. Stay with us. Under the Eye 19. Welcome back. They're here. Hey, don't forget the show continues on our Facebook page. I would encourage all of you to watch and people are loving it and that makes us happy because we love doing it. It's the Jason Show Before the Show show <laughs> live on Facebook every weekday morning around 915 where we take you inside our 9 a.m. planning meeting. It's unedited. It's unscripted. You get to meet all the behind the scenes folks like Jeff and Ted intern Kenny, oh, director yes. Leo, yes. Kendall's in the meeting. And today mm -hmm. uh, you <laughs> you jokingly got mad at me because t as I'm talking about, I remember at the beginning of the show, I said I'm falling apart. I have a, mm -hmm. a pain on my side and my toes messed up. It goes to Kendall and Kendall, what did you say? The world has changed because I thought I found a gray hair. Yeah. In my head and I turned 30 like less than a month ago and now I'm going gray. Now, now keep in mind, Kendall's saying this in a room full of people 35 and older. I mean, let's just say, so nobody in our meeting has sympathy for Miss One Gray Hair. I'm no. just going to tell you, yeah. But it was a false alarm. It was just dry shampoo. So everything's oh, yeah. fine. Oh, thank goodness, audience. Thank goodness. But I, give you, I gave you such a hard time, so I'm, I'm waiting for the comment on Facebook. You are so mean, so to, mean Kendall. to Kendall. Yeah, anyway. So I'm glad you do not have any gray hairs yet. But 
Oh gosh! I mean, when it happens, it happens. That's I fine. think you're gonna I look beautiful as a girl. Like... I think you, when you can become gray-haired, I'll be long dead. But I mean, you'll look great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Don't forget to get tickets to our show. Just go to our Facebook page where you already are and click that uh, click that uh, ticket tab. You're in by 9:15. You're out by 11:15. That is gonna do it for us today. Thanks to all of our special guests in the audience, and thanks to just the audience in general for being here every single day. We're going to see you tomorrow, but right now, if you're a kid watching this being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. See you tomorrow.